Hello and welcome back to a new Rage Gaming video. Today we're checking out a classic MMORPG that in fact was very influential not only because it was a major stepping stone for a lot of action combat in MMOs but also a major stepping stone for me. Nine years ago I made my very first video review of a game and that game was Vindictus. This was part of my 1000 subscriber special back on my original channel and I was joined by Rage all the way back then as we tried out this game and gave our thoughts about it. Hey guys, and as you can see, me and Rage have been playing a game called Vindictus recently. God, this is so Monster Hunter, it's killing me. <laughs> Fighting a big boss where you have to learn his tells, and then dodge, and then go in. Oh. I think I've already got it, to be fair. Yep, all the way back then, nearly 10 years ago, Josh was still going on about Monster Hunter to me. Honestly, mate, I think he's obsessed or something. But he wasn't wrong. The hunting and fighting of these many monsters is very comparable to Monster Hunter. Attacking weak spots, watching for move sets until you can go in and do some damage before dodging out, all while using your own unique weapon, move set, and abilities. Today, though, I'm basically making that same video I made nine years ago, but hopefully I've got a bit better at this stuff. So let's do it. Should you play Vindictus in 2020? God, I can't believe it's been nine years. The video was released in October 2011, so it really is nine years ago now. Vindictus is still a free-to-play game which is available on Steam, focused on instanced mission-based stages, ending with many different boss fights and varying difficulty. It all gets a lot more in-depth and difficult as you progress through the levels, and you'll play one of the 14 different unique characters, half of which have two subclasses to choose between, which totally changes their feel and play style. There's a ton of variety here compared to when me and Rage played the game. Back then, there was only three characters with those classes of tank, melee DPS, and caster DPS. Things are very different now though, not just mechanically, which is, hey, way more options, right? But look at some of these guys, the armor, the weapons, the visuals of greatly improved for the equipment for your character. And there's lots of choices for these classes, but sadly, the same can't be said for the character creator. Since we're playing a character, it is both gender lock classes because you're locked to that character, but also the character creator is very limited. The barest of bones to this thing with only some basic hair options and limited options in general. As it turns out, the real character customization comes in the main game when you're using the avatar shop. That's right, since this game is free to play, the monetization that they do comes from cosmetics you'll find in this shop. Look at this, there's so much going on here. Tons of different outfits that are very varied, super high quality. I've got to give them a bit of props for this because clearly money went into this and it does the job well because nearly every player I've seen at higher levels was wearing something crazy like what we're seeing here in this shop. Thankfully, there's a lot of events and in-game systems that do reward you with three tokens for the many, many hairstyles you find in the game. And of course, get ready, the underwear system. System. Every character has custom underwear options, and these are a little intense at times. A viewer on my stream shared the underwear that they just unlocked while we were leveling. This is what it was. Oh, it's it's, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's just look at this guy. Yep, that is barely underwear to be honest. So if you're a fan of like a waifu sim game, well actually there's some really good customization here and lots of different ways to unlock it with a fair amount of different options for free. Or if you want to go ham and pay for it, lots of good stuff. Moving on then to the combat because this is the best part for me. This is action combat at its finest based on the combo system that every class has with their own unique combos. Using a mix of left and right clicks, you alternate between light and smash attacks, building up the resource required for your special ability. Abilities. These combos can be short bursts for burst juggles or wide swings, perfect for AoE. In the case of my class, the dual pistol user that actually feels more like shotguns and pistols, she whips the guns around to create a circle of bullets. And as I progress and improve the combos, I can do it even multiple times. My class is based all around summoning portals, opening them up and jumping through them, moving through the fight effectively with that, letting me use this AoE whipping attack to clean up massive packs of enemies in such a smooth and flashy wear. For longer combos though, we have bigger bursts for single targets that can stagger enemies. If I'm able to time the attacks without being interrupted, positioning carefully or even using the small movements the combos give me to my advantage. It feels really good and it looks really good too. Then when we've got the resource built up and the mana for it, we can unleash the powerful, more flashy abilities with their crazy animations for massive bursts of damage. These abilities are way more limited compared to the combos though. You have to build up the resource 
and then the cooldowns for these abilities are really long as well compared to other MMOs. But I quite like this system. It makes the abilities more impactful. You need to weave them in the middle of your combos for a surprise burst at the right moment. The animations are pretty solid. Despite the dated visuals of the game, they stand up even well today. I can open portals that shoot out giant spears or like shoot 10 other guns to unleash a barrage of bullets. Even open up a portal that I jump into, move around and then leap out of for an incredible burst hit. And then we have the transformations of the game, which go to another level. These are on the longest cooldowns of everything I've unlocked so far. Transformations do as you'd expect, though. They transform you into another, more powerful being than your regular mode. In my case, I become the Dark Knight, making everything I do much more deadly, but also unlocking the transformation attacks that are more bursty and powerful and unique with their animations. It looks sick, and it actually kind of reminded me of Gon from Hunter x Hunter when he transforms and has that crazy long hair. This gets more complex and interesting as you go, as you'd expect, but overall, I would say the combat has been very satisfying and only improves as you level up and unlock those more complicated or versatile combos, improving your abilities to make them stronger and cheaper, because eventually I was able to jump in and out of portals constantly, and it was so good. This has to be one of my favorite combat systems from back then, and it still has satisfied me greatly today. This combat had a big impact on action combat in MMOs in general, so you gotta respect it. Plus, I've only played this one class. There's so many to try, and next time I go back, I'm definitely gonna play something different. Now let's talk about how these levels work. Everything is based on this mission instance sort of system. You want to take a mission which takes you to different regions with totally different visuals and mechanics, bosses and threats. Each region has quite a lot of different missions that take you through similar visual style in the region you're in, but different levels themselves. These are filled with traps and hidden loot, many enemies in big groups, all the mini bosses, and of course, the final boss at the end of each mission. You can do these missions solo or group up as a party of up to four, which gives you this funny lobby where you're on a boat while you're all waiting for everyone to ready up. There's a shop here you can buy or repair and just chill while everyone gets ready. I'm just having to lie down, don't worry about me. No! Quickly. No! <laughs> no! No! <laughs> Nothing like a bit of old cringe to splice into my new videos. These bounty boards are found in the hub. These are the things that you use to select your missions. There's four hubs in the game right now, apparently, with the original small town you start in being exactly the same, with a blacksmith for crafting, a magic shop for enhancement, the barracks for missions, and other general store stuff. With the other hubs that are in the game now, they're a bit more interesting. I just unlocked the second one, which is like a massive fortress with a castle and a literal dragon just chilling on top of it for some reason. This hub is way cooler than in the original and it has all the shops and stuff that you need but hilariously these new hubs as cool as they are are way too big they're massively inconvenient because the stores are so far away from everything and the bounty board's just awkwardly placed too far away everyone ends up just using the original boring hub that's super dated because it just has the best functionality which is a shame and that really needs addressing when you think about it those dungeons you'll go through with a party of up to four like i said but the raiding in this game is done with eight players and you have a matchmaking system to make that happen which is quite nice i found that the hub was always super populated with people just hanging out or talking messing about using emotes which was nice to see next the story all characters have their own crazy story which is a little anime-esque my character story setup is a bit weird but interesting as a portal magic user i tried to use as a kid this magic secretly and messed up summoning a sort of godlike being who then possessed my mum. naturally uh this character loses her whole family and is looking for her sister as part of her main sort of mission. But the story takes a massive back burner to what we actually do in the game, only occasionally popping up at, say, the end of certain region missions. It's fine, and I don't think any of this stuff was originally in the game because I don't have any memory of Lan, my original character, having anything like this. But to be honest, the story is nothing to lose your mind over, so let's move on. Time to talk about leveling. The game has been going for about a decade now and has had multiple expansions known as Seasons of Content, adding these new level caps and new stuff. When I played, I believe the original level cap was only 44, but some people have told me that it was actually 60. Whatever the case, it's now 105, which is a lot of levels to work through. To combat this, they streamlined the early leveling all the way up until around 80 and above, I was told. This results in, well, easy gameplay. 
easy bosses, no farming loot, and the armor that you get is just dropped off of kills instead of earned and crafted, resulting, sadly, in a very repetitive feeling state of the missions just in different locations. You just kind of smash through it with your brain off, and as cool as the bosses are visually and mechanically, you don't really have to do anything. You just attack it and it's going to die. So through those early levels, you just kind of smash through it, and it doesn't feel very good, it's not very exciting, it's very repetitive. And what kept me going was the world and the combat more than the missions themselves because of what happened to the leveling. Back in the day, it used to be great. We'd have to make our way through this content slowly and carefully and fight all the basic enemies seriously and the bosses were really intense like a monster hunter boss. You'd have to grind them out, kill them, get the materials, craft armor with that and then using your new equipment and your armor, you can then progress to new levels and sections. These days, you just run for it all with your brain off. This really needs to be addressed, I think, and there's a few ways you could do that but i'd honestly just remove the original missions that aren't nearly as good as the higher level stuff and lower the level cap like say what wow's doing then we just get straight to the good stuff and the leveling doesn't need to be so crazy quick and not as satisfying like it used to be back at launch we must have only barely reached level 30 after a few weeks of playing whereas now i made it there in like three hours having had a much less interesting time compared lastly i'd be amiss not to bring up this part now it is a older engine that the game is running on. It's clearly a dated game. Visually, you got the floor textures in the first hub, which are hideous compared to, say, the armor sets and weapons that we've seen that are amazing compared to that. All the characters load in super slowly, and there's plenty of bugs you're going to experience too. Even when you load up the hub for the first time, the game just lags out for a moment while you load in, no matter how good your computer is. By now, I fully expected to be playing an overhauled version of the game that refines the leveling for new content, the visuals, maybe that updated engine of some kind after they've had like nine years of reasonable success. I was basically expecting to play Vindictus Remastered now and I ended up playing the original Vindictus with some new content. So in conclusion, it is a mixed bag guys, just like the recent reviews on Steam. Overall positive but mixed reviews recently and I think it's summed up by the fact that this game really should have had some kind of overhaul to bring it to the current standards of today's gaming. The combat is still wonderful, and I loved it, and I played this game over the weekend, and honestly, I've really enjoyed my time. The nostalgia of the missions, seeing all the new updates with the new classes, trying out this portal gunslinger type. Watch out, watch out, there's a trap. Here, I'll activate the trap. Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! Oh, fuck. Oh, man. but I can't deny that the game is a bit dated. Yeah, the combat, the classes, the cosmetics, they're all great, but on the other hand, the story, the mission system, the repetitive leveling due to the over streamlined easy enemies, and of course, that dated engine that it's running on. The game has big highs, and some big lows. So should you play it with all of that in mind? Well, thankfully, because the game is free to play and easy to access on Steam, I can recommend you try this one if you're interested. It has some good things going for it. The characters, the many play styles, the huge variety of classes offered. The instance nature of the missions means you can play for hours, smashing out missions and missions, or you could just pop in for 10 minutes and do a couple, then jump off. With that absolutely massive cosmetic system in place, including plenty of the free stuff that you get for it, there's a a lot to get out of that aspect of the game and in general the game still feels good after all these years you just got to be wary of the bad stuff like the game starting slow due to the low amount of combos that you unlock before you start leveling that streamlined leveling process itself takes away a lot of the original fun of fighting those tough bosses farming those drops and crafting special equipment only coming back into play once you reach higher levels now you just kind of steamroll through everything until you get to the fun stuff if you're looking to try the game it's free. Go for it, man. I'm sure you'll enjoy some of the great aspects of this game if you can forgive those irritating parts that it certainly has. But there you have it. Vindictus in 2020. This feels weird, like I've come full circle or something. Thank you for the privilege to make this video again almost 10 years later. I hope this was interesting or even useful to you. As always, if you yourself have played this game recently and there's anything you'd like to add to what I saw in the time that I played the game, drop it in the comments. You might just help someone. For now though, I've been Hollow, you've been you, and I'll see you next time.